Earlier today, I asked the House Speaker, Paul Ryan, about the White House claim that they wanted to revoke the security clearances of former national security officials who have criticized the president. The president has said that he wants to revoke security clearances from uh, some former national security officials who still hold them and who have made political remarks. Is it dangerous to go down that road? I think he's trolling people, honestly. <laughs> trolling people. David French is a senior writer with the National Review. And Jonathan Capehart is a Pulitzer Prize winning Washington Post opinion writer. He is also an MSNBC contributor. David, can I start with you on the House Speaker there? I mean, this is something that other Republicans on the Hill have taken very seriously. Bob Corker said it's it's this uh, threat about security clearances in some ways evokes uh, a banana republic, for example. Uh, which, in your view, what should Republicans be saying about this? Well, I, I think two things. One, I think Paul Ryan is probably factually correct. I think it's factually correct that <laughs> Trump is trolling here. Uh, but I think that Bob Corker is responding with, has the better response, that we don't want the president, the president of the United States threatening to use the power of his office to punish people because they have opposed him politically. I mean, that's sort of Constitution 101. So in, in an important way, Ryan's factually correct. I think Corker, however, has the better response. Jonathan Capehart, weigh in here on, on how Republicans are handling uh, this threat. And, and do you think this is simply the president trying to troll, as Paul Ryan suggests? Look, I, I think that David is absolutely right. Um, I think Paul, Speaker Ryan is probably fa is factually correct, but Senator Corker has the right response. But we shouldn't be having this conversation. A normal presidency, a functioning White House, would never in a million years allow the President of the United States to say, hint, or even think about using the power of his office uh, as a political weapon against people he perceives as enemies. And so while Speaker Ryan wants us to not have our hair be on fire and not take President Trump too seriously, I do think it's important that the institution, uh, the institutions of our government take very seriously when someone makes a threat like this. Yeah, and David Ryan essentially said, look, this is an executive branch problem. He seemed to say Congress has no responsibility here. Well, I think Congress would have a responsibility if the President of the United States went ahead and violated constitutional rights of American citizens by initiating government reprisals against them based on their viewpoint. Every branch of government has a role in protecting the Constitution, and there's room for legislative reform if the executive abuses his executive branch authorities. But his role is, I will admit, far more removed than, say, the court's role, for example, if there was actual action taken against American citizens by the executive branch. That would be the next immediate branch to check the president. Fair enough. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit here because there was another remarkable moment from a Trump administration official earlier today. Jeff Sessions uh, was addressing an audience in his official capacity of, as Attorney General of the United States. Watch what happened. <laughs> uh, I, lock, all right. <laughs> well, so ra 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 I heard that a long time over the last campaign. Worth noting, Jonathan Capehart, that Trump, the Trump administration has many former officials, campaign officials and administration officials actually uh, either having pled guilty or currently locked up. In the case of former campaign chairman Paul Manafort, Hillary Clinton, who, of course, is who they're talking about, has not been charged with any crime. Uh, not been charged with any crime and is living her life as someone not under suspicion or under investigation. It is shameful that the Attorney General of the United States didn't have the presence of mind to at least say, this is not appropriate, this is not appropriate here. He is an official of the United States government, no longer should be in campaign mode, and yet we see that from the President of the United States with his speech just now to the veterans of foreign wars, and apparently to now the Attorney General of the United States, campaign mode is 24-7 in the Trump administration. David French, I mean, first of all, Jeff Sessions would in theory have the the power, or at least certainly some oversight over uh, any investigation. So if you could address that. And second of all, President Trump is not running against Hillary Clinton. 
Well, right, but I, you, the Hillary Clinton has a continued hold over the conservative imagination. Trust me, anytime you criticize President Trump, the response is an immediate, well, you would have preferred Hillary Clinton. So she still has a, some sort of weird psychological hold over the mind of many, many conservatives. But let's just back up for a minute and just say as a point of fact, Jeff Sessions has resisted uh, at least Twitter pressure from the president to, to come after Hillary Clinton. And I think what was happening there, as you saw, uh, that, that clip, I think what you saw was he was hearing a chant and then repeating what he'd heard. I don't think he was joining in that chant. I, I think it was a very momentary incident that didn't have any yeah. larger ramifications. All right. David French, Jonathan Capehart, thank you both for your perspective today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Casey. And we will be right back.